What are the cool new AI algorithms out there? Image generation seems pretty cool. Text to image generation. Okay, so how good is this algorithm? Let's try a blue bird. Okay, not bad. Um, a blue bird with a white beak. Eh, it's okay. Interesting. Um, a blue bird with a white beak and a red crown. Wow, <laughs> okay. A white beak and a red crown flying in a jungle. Uh, how is that a flying bird? Hi everyone. So today I wanna to talk about this cool algorithm I came across, which basically takes a text description and converts it into an image. So the main applications of this technology would be in design. So imagine you're uh, creating something in Photoshop and you just tell the computer, I want a bird with uh, red feathers and a black beak. And it, it just creates that for you. That would make design so much easier, so much faster. The first algorithm that was able to generate photorealistic images from a text description was called StackGAN. ATTNGAN builds on top of StackGAN by using an attention network, which allows it to capture word level information, so specific information, uh, along with the broader sentence level information that StackGAN uses. Okay, now into the technical details. So this is what the architecture for attention GAN looks like. We start off by taking the text description and passing it through a bi-directional LSTM. This outputs a sentence level and word level features. So the sentence level features are a d-dimensional vector and the word level features are a d by t-dimensional matrix where t is the number of words in the text description. We first take our sentence level vector and pass it through a conditioning augmentation. So this takes a random sample from a normal distribution where the mean is the mean of the vector and the standard deviation is the covariance matrix of the sentence vector. So the point is to make the algorithm more robust by giving it a larger variety of samples. We take our sentence level representation, concatenate it with a random noise vector Z and pass it through our first feature generator. So this feature generator is responsible for most of the upsampling and outputs a hidden state zero. This hidden state is then passed along to the next feature generator, which also takes into account attention. The attention model takes as input the word level embeddings and the previous hidden state. It outputs a list where each item represents how important each of the words were in drawing a specific subregion. The way this works is that we first take our word level embeddings and put them through a perceptron layer so that they're the same dimension as our hidden state. We then take the dot product between a specific word and our representation of a subregion to get the attention score. So using that, we use this formula to calculate which word had the most impact in generating a specific subregion. And then we take all those, put them into a list, and that's the output for uh, the attention network. The third feature generator then does the exact same thing. So it takes as input the word level representations and the previous hidden state, and it outputs a more detailed, richer hidden state. Now, theoretically, you could do this forever, just keep stacking feature generator on top of feature generator, but the authors capped it at two because it's very memory and computation intensive. Training this model is quite interesting. So every feature generator has a corresponding image generator and discriminator. So the feature generator passes its hidden state to the image generator, which is just a convolutional layer. It 
converts the hidden state into an RGB image. This image is then passed to the discriminator, which tries to distinguish whether it's real or fake. Based on this, the generator gets better and the discriminator. More formally, this is what the loss looks like for a discriminator. So it's broken up into a conditional and unconditional loss. Basically, the unconditional loss is the discriminator trying to figure out whether the image is real or fake. So it's trying to score a high value for real images and a low value for fake images. The conditional loss is how uh, similar the sentence is to the image. So does the, the sentence correspond with the image? Do they make sense together? And again, it's trying to maximize a real, uh, the sentence and a real image and minimize its score for a sentence and a fake image. Fake images being uh, images generated by the generators. This is what the loss for the generator looks like. So it's broken up into a couple of parts. I'll go, go over the loss for G first. So the loss for G is the sum of the losses of all of the generators. So of the um, image generator number one, two, and three. These losses are again made up of a conditional and unconditional loss. So the conditional loss is the generator trying to maximize the discriminator's prediction of how well the sentence vector and the generated image match up. And the unconditional loss is the generator trying to maximize the discriminator score for uh, the image. So it wants the discriminator to think that the image is real. LG is able to capture whether an image is real or fake and how well the sentence level vector matches up with the image. But we also want to understand how well the image captures word level features. And in order to do that, the authors came up with DAMSUM, Deep Adversarial Similarity, what was it? Deep Attention Multimodal Similarity Model. So I'm just gonna call it the DAMSUM loss. In order to calculate it, we first take our image generated by the generator and pass it through an Inception V3 model. We take the output of the last average pool layer as our global image features and the output of the mixed 6E layer to get our local image features. So the local image features are uh, the features for each subregion. We then take our local and global image features and pass them through a perceptron layer to get them into the same dimension as our word level and sentence level embeddings. Then we take the dot product between V, our local, uh, image features and E our word level embeddings to compute a similarity matrix. So S of IJ represents the similarity between the ith word and the jth subregion. We then use this formula to get the weighted sum over all of the subregions according to how much word I impacted them. Then we use this formula to get the cosine similarity between word EI and CI, which is the weighted sum over all of the subregions. So if these two have a high similarity, that means that the model did a good job of taking the word and understanding it and painting an image accordingly. And uh, if it, they don't match up that well, then the model didn't do a good job. Then to get our final score for how well image Q matches up with description D on the word level, we use this formula, which just takes all of our cosine similarities and adds them up. The authors also, again, incorporated sentence level features into the Damson loss. So in order to do that, they took the cosine similarity between V bar, which is the global image level features, and E bar, which are the sentence level features. Now we have a score for how well the image and description match up on the word and sentence level. But that's not enough because we need to understand how these pairings compare to other pairings. So how the score for D1 and Q1 compare to D1 and Q2. In order to do that, we use some conditional probability. So we look at what the probability is of getting image Q based on description D 
and getting description D based on image Q. And uh, so this is done in batches. You take a batch of descriptions and images, run it over and get scores. So we do that for the word level and the sentence level. Then we take all of these scores, add them up, and that's your final Damson loss. And of course the Damson loss is added with the normal loss for the generators to get the final loss for the generators. That's it. So now that we have our losses, we calculate our gradients according to that and train the network. I hope this explanation of Atgan was helpful for you guys. I thought it was a very interesting algorithm, something I hadn't seen a lot of people talk about. So just wanted to share that with you guys. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys later.